The big 2024 North American total solar eclipse will occur April 8th. And if you're planning to view the eclipse, the most important thing you should know is when it's not in totality, the partial phase before and after, you must wear eclipse glasses if you plan to look at the sun. One of the reasons viewing an eclipse can be dangerous is, under normal circumstances we have an aversion reflex in the eyes that when we look at the sun, we instantly close them to protect our retinas. But when the eclipse is in its partial phases, we have the ability to look at the sun without that aversion reflex kicking in. And you may not know it right at the time. You may feel fine, and then the next day or the day after that, you'll have vision problems that can be temporary or permanent and you can be left legally blind so it's imperative that during the partial phases before and after totality you have gotta wear these eclipse glasses a total solar eclipse where the moon completely blocks the view of the sun will move across North America from Mexico to Canada now experts are saying that this eclipse is going to be extra special but if you listen to scientists explaining it you may get lost in all the mumbo jumbo and find yourself being turned off by the whole thing. So let me try to explain it this way. The sun's corona, its outer atmosphere, is super active right now as it is near or in its solar maximum. And when the eclipse is in totality, that big active corona will be the only thing you see and there will be all kinds of dancing, wispy goodness. Lots of oohs and ahs. This is the sun's corona during the total solar eclipse of 2017 and this was when the sun's solar activity was fairly low. So this year should be good stuff. Also, with this eclipse, totality will last longer than it did during the 2017 eclipse. For that event, the longest period of totality was experienced near Carbondale, Illinois at two minutes and 42 seconds. For this year's event, the period of totality will last longer than four minutes from Mexico to Indiana, and as the eclipse exits the US and enters Canada, eh? The eclipse will last up to 3 minutes and 21 seconds. Visit GreatAmericanEclipse.com for more information about that. And let's talk about location. The area of totality, shown here on this map, will stretch through Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, and on up through Maine and New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, Canada. And in all those areas, local businesses and authorities are preparing for a large influx of visitors who want to be in the path of totality. It is expected that motels will fill up and traffic will increase substantially. At least one Texas county has already issued a state of emergency as it is expecting traffic congestion, gas shortages, and other headaches. And I plan to get into the area of totality and watch and document the event, but I won't be doing all that. After all, the month of April brings with it rain and cloudy skies in a lot of areas. And what then? There goes all that money. However, even if cloudy, it will still be worth going outside as, for a brief time, it will appear to be nighttime in the middle of the day and some weird stuff will still be visible, even through the clouds. That's a scientific term, weird stuff. It should be understood that there are poor quality glasses out there, and you don't want to find out the hard way that you have purchased a pair that are substandard or counterfeit. Proper solar eclipse glasses are made with solar filters that conform to a worldwide safety standard known as ISO 12312-2. You'll see it printed on the side of glasses, as seen here. Regular sunglasses or homemade solar filters are not safe for watching an eclipse because they transmit sunlight at a rate that is thousands of times too high. How can you tell if your solar eclipse glasses are safe? You can check to see if your glasses are labeled with the ISO 12312-2 or ISO 12312-2-2015 International Safety Standard. However, some bad actors simply copy the ISO logo and print it on eclipse glasses that don't meet the standard. And you can't test the glasses yourself because it has to be done with an expensive piece of lab equipment. The best way to make sure your Eclipse glasses are compliant is to buy them from a reputable dealer. On the screen, I am showing a list from the American Astronomical Society of reputable manufacturers and distributors. Just pause the video to see it, or visit the link in the description of this video.
Here are some glasses I used for the 2017 Eclipse. This pair is from a package that I didn't open until the 2023 annual Eclipse. Obviously, they are in great shape. However, here is a pair that I actually wore in 2017, then stored in a drawer. Notice the scratches and other issues from neglect. If you have scratches or other issues on your glasses, do not use them. Now, once the moon is completely blocking the sun, it's safe to take off the glasses. However, again, at all other times, like prior to totality or after totality, you should wear the glasses. Okay, let's take a look at this graphic. Here you can see the path of totality. The eclipse will move up through Mexico, into Texas, through Indiana, up through the Northeast, into Canada. The eclipse will be partial at all times in these areas right here, outside of the path of totality. So anytime you want to look at the eclipse, you must wear your eclipse glasses. However, even if you're in the path of totality, until the eclipse is total, you must wear your eclipse glasses to view the sun. In other words, anytime you can actually see the sun, you must wear eclipse glasses. If you can even see the tiniest sliver of the sun, you need to wear eclipse glasses. Okay, and let's take a look at this excellent video over at greatamericaneclipse.com. This shows the path of totality as it travels across the entire continent. So it'll cross over Mazatlan, Sinaloa, Mexico at about 11.07 a.m. and continue to travel northeast. through Durango, through Coahuila, and it will enter Texas around the Del Rio Eagle Pass area around 12.27, 12.28 p.m. See here you have Del Rio, there's Eagle Pass. Now let's stop it right here. You can see that a good chunk of San Antonio is going to be in the path of totality. And if you'll notice, it's on the edge of totality. So these folks living in San Antonio right here will be in the path of totality much less than, say, in Fredericksburg or Kerrville they'll have a lot more time to view the portion, the totality portion right here. Okay, let's continue on. And you'll see here it moves up northwest through all these places, Killeen. And then uh, you go through Waco right here. And then of course, you're gonna go through the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And we'll pause it right there. So someone in Fort Worth is only going to be in the path of totality for, a, you know, a, a decent time, but much shorter than, say, Ennis, Texas. You can see right here, Ennis is going to get a lot of this path of totality. And it's going to be probably hundreds of years before the Dallas area sees a total eclipse, or is in the path of totality of a total solar eclipse again. So everybody will be dead by the time the next one comes around you'll see here let's go back a tiny bit it should enter let's see it'll enter the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex around 1 40 p.m. and then uh, passing through it hit say Plano and Frisco around probably 141 142 I'll go ahead and start it again here it's starting to go into Oklahoma up here uh, you can see here Antlers Hugo southeastern Oklahoma and then it comes into Arkansas Texarkana, uh, Hot Springs, Little Rock's going to be in the path of totality, and then right up here we're going into Missouri, see right here St. Louis will not be in the path of totality, so if you plan to look up at all, you should be wearing your eclipse glasses, or proper solar filters.
Indianapolis is going to be in the uh, path of totality quite a bit. I'm pretty lucky right there. We'll come up here. And then it's going to go on up into Canada, A. Eh? Akron, Ohio. Buffalo, New York. Oh, Niagara Falls. Well, that'd be kind of a neat place to be. Rochester, New York. Quebec, Canada. Looks like a portion of them is going to be in the path of totality a little bit. Now we're going back into the United States through Maine. And no, notice the shape it's taking on as it's curving here. And here's Nova Scotia. And then I think this is Newfoundland. Newfoundland and Labrador. I think it's pronounced Newfoundland. A. Eh? Wow. All across there. And that's pretty much it. I'm no expert on photographing and filming solar eclipses, and I won't pretend to be. But let me say this. If you plan to photograph and or film the sun during the time when the eclipse is not in totality, a certified solar filter must be secured to the front of the lens. The same goes for viewing through binoculars, telescopes, etc. Certified solar filters must be secured to the front of lenses. Wearing eclipse glasses while looking through unprotected lenses will not protect your eyes. In fact, it's the opposite. The concentrated solar rays will burn through the filters of the eclipse glasses and cause instant severe eye injury. Again, the proper solar filtration must cover the front of the optics device. In conclusion, I hope it's not too cloudy wherever you go to witness this once in a lifetime event. Good luck! Oh, hello! I'm Randy from Randy's Natural World. I hope you enjoyed the video on... Total Solar Eclipse. Yes, yes, that's it. Today I'm pretending to be a scientist. Maybe I'm doing research on a five o'clock shadow, I'm not sure. But that's neither here nor there. I'm hoping to speak to those of you who haven't subscribed yet. Here's a list of reasons why you should. It's free. You can't beat that price. Number two, quality content. Always quality content. Number three, YouTube allows unlimited subscriptions, so there's no reason not to. Anyway, number four, are you a procrastinator? There's no need to procrastinate. And I know what you're thinking, Randy, I'll subscribe when I get around to it. Well, here's your round to it right here. Round to it. So go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead. A wise decision.